What is up, everybody? Uh, I'll give everyone a little bit of time to check in. Uh, gonna got a full day of archery. I'm actually with my good buddy Tornston, and I always pronounce an N in there, even though he doesn't have one in his name. But for some reason, that's what I do. But um, yeah, knock on nation archer. You guys will get to see him on the turkey hunt coming up and we are down here getting his bow all ready for the spring season so i'm actually going to do several different live feeds between the facebook page here and i may even do a few um, story live feeds on my instagram as well so hopefully if you have your notifications on you'll get notified but uh last night i actually did an entire uh, Rebow build. I'll grab this quick. Here's T's bow. Um, we actually put on a whole new set of strings and cables. Uh, set them up with an elevate rest. And I guess it took two shots, three shots to get bullet hole. It was actually two for me, and he shot the perfect bullet hole right after my last adjustment. But uh, this is going to be a setup right here, and he has chose to go with the new Autumn Orange Limited Edition 6mm FMJs, so pretty cool combination. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was there's been a few things. Uh, T is just like you guys. This is his jam room. Um, for those of you who are wondering how I'm surrounded by such a plethora of vinyl it's because he's a pretty pretty awesome dude you'll get to meet him but more or less he is a big shot at Atlantic Records and he's worked with some of the most awesome bands of all time and he's also a bow hunter and he was a fellow knock on nation follower and he's trying to learn how to do archery stuff himself and he's been following the live feeds and actually got with me through um, through our website and he's got his own Xpress, he's got his bits and burger and he started to do some of this stuff himself and what I thought would be cool is if we actually go through a few things that I've noticed that I think he could have done a little bit different and later on as soon as the wind calms down we're gonna do some shooting He's been working with the Silverback for probably four weeks, maybe. Is that about right? And we're gonna, there's, he's probably 80% there, 85% there. We're gonna do a few more little things and really get him tricked out, shooting better. And right now, I just wanna talk about a few things that I see from him that I think could help the rest of you as well. So here was the arrows that he made himself. Uh, not bad. I mean, certainly better than my first set of fletched arrows, but there's a few things. One, some of the arrows have a variance of where the vinyl is on the back of the shaft right here. And then also, you can see that there's been a little bit excess glue that's been applied, so it's starting to run down here, kind of get a little bit globby. Um, so I want to just talk about those things um, and help you guys out. So with a lot of the glues, um, less is often more. You want to have enough to fully cover the base of the vein or the shoe of the vein. But if you have too much, then it actually takes too long to cure and the back of your vein ends up slipping just a little bit. Um, and if it's too much, it can actually start to um, be problematic with arrow flight consistency. So I'm gonna show you, we're gonna strip this down. I wanna show you that quick and show you a tool that I've, I think I've shown you before, but I wanna show you again. And then talk with you about when you strip your arrows, what to do. And then here was, <laughs> here's this glue bottle, okay? And hey, I've, I've been in that boat. I've had my glue bottle do this too. So for those of you who are ordering the Max Bond and the knock-on um, veins and a cleaning pen, good job. But 
How do you prevent, he actually has three different kinds of aero glues laying around here now because he pretty much uses his aero glue until he can't get his cap off. And then either him or a beaver grab that thing with their teeth and start twisting it until they actually just rip the plastic off. So here's the thing. One, it's important that every single time you use this, you make sure that you fully clean it off, you know. And I like to use, if you have the AAE um, wipes that we sell, then it's important to just take that wipe when you're all done with your whole fletching experience and clean off that as much as possible. Um, hopefully you don't have any inside of the cap or obviously this is glue. It will glue the cap on. So you have to clean your bottle. Worst case scenario is before you have to buy an entire new bottle, they do actually sell replacement caps and actually by Monday I'm going to be selling replacement caps too. <laughs> <laughs> so James or Shazzy Fresh, if you guys are watching, I've actually got a massive bag of these down in my cabinet in the school of knock aero cabinet so let's uh we need to get some of these on the website for all of you out there who like to um, have a beaver attack the top of your bottle so we're not going to be using this um well we might be able to we might be using it just i don't know what if i rot now it's got a different glue in there but i'm gonna use for right now i'm gonna use this easton one that he's got I'm not 100% correct. So when it comes to fletchings, different fletchings are made of different materials and some materials work better with certain types of glues. Um, with the Max, the Max veins, it's a much stiffer vein, which I really like. The durability is super impressive and the memory is very good. So, you know, if, if you shoot this and it penetrates through a target a piece and you pull it out, it's not going to be all rippled and waved out, which is going to be really, really important. So, you need to always clean these, either with the wipes or um, Torsten has the Max Weld Pen, which works really good. And another thing that um, my buddy Greg Poole told me was that the way the activation works on these it's actually best to clean them right prior to fletching them so you don't want to clean them and let them lay around for a long time you want to you know clean clean three or four uh veins and then fletch an arrow and then go from there so josh dixon is asking um he can't get his veins to adhere to his vinyl wraps very good he says they'll come off, although he's using AAE wipes and Max Bond glue. Okay. And for those of you listening, Torsten is from Germany. <laughs> <laughs> speaks like a Nazi. Yeah, no. <laughs> he's not a Nazi, but he he speaks he speaks like a German, which I think is pretty cool, pretty tough, and he certainly dresses like one. He rolls his jeans. A lot of times has, um, well, he rolls his jeans no matter what shoes he has on, but. Yeah, definitely German, and I actually took a picture of his and pointed out the fact. His goal was to not look German, and <laughs> with this one picture he sent me, I literally circled seven things and pretty much put fail across <laughs> it between his rolled pants, his boots, um, his military release holder, his Leica binocular and his German spectacles I pretty much said fail but anyway so the key to this dude is you also need to know certain vinyls actually have a film on them and I've found myself and this goes all the way back some vinyls just do not do really well with certain glue combinations and that you know unfortunately that is a fact I've had a lot of different people send me different wraps and a lot of times I try certain wraps and um, I haven't had success. These particular ones are doing good. I don't even know where you got these, but the knock on ones will be coming. Hopefully they're on order. So hopefully within a few weeks, you're going to see all the knock on wraps come to 
the knockonarchery.com website and the price is going to be way better because you're not having to get them all the way over from the Netherlands. Um, the ones that I found there I've used for over a decade and they are dynamite. I do like to use the Max Clean wipes and I actually always wipe the vinyl after I've put it on the aero shaft. I wipe the vinyl, then I clean the base of the vein, I let it dry for just a little bit, and then I go ahead and put it on. So another thing that's important for this is to make sure your hands are always clean because T and I just got through eating eggs and I triggered some local bratwurst from here and they were dynamite. I actually, as I was cooking the brats, I put a couple cans of beer, and about five tablespoons of butter in a little dish. Let that simmer up, cook the brats just before they were ready and then let them bathe in my beer butter bath and we ate those. So if I came down after that meal and wanted to fletch arrows without cleaning my hands with dish soap, his veins would probably start coming off too. So um, the wraps that he has and you know before he wrecked his bottle, you can see these are super solid and that's our goal so one thing I want to share with you this this is um, I don't know is this Q2 archery this used to be called a zip strip I have several of these they're called zip strips you can find them at LancasterArchery.com and this is an awesome tool for removing veins and vinyl from your arrow shafts um, you pretty much it's built with a radius to where you can just run it down that shaft and remove it. Um, one thing I'll tell you is when you get heaps of glue like that, it could get a little bit tough to get that off, but this is much better than a sharp knife. If anything, if you have like an older dull pocket knife, those are great for removing the bulk of your veins or your vinyl as well. If you have a really sharp knife, you do run the risk of actually shaving carbon off a carbon shaft um, or even peeling off aluminum from an aluminum shaft. So these are safer. Um, you don't want to you don't want to make any disturbance to the carbon or the aluminum on the rear of the shaft because this takes a tremendous amount of load from the bowstring pushing it forward. So you don't want to have any accidents from there. But the way this works pretty much lay it on the shaft I'll stand up pretty much lay it on the shaft just like this and you run it down like that now the one thing I just did that could have been stupid was I always prefer to take your knocks out if they come out because Tornston had so much <laughs> glue he actually glued some of his knocks in but let me get this out okay I'm gonna take this out this is this is Tornson's uh, vinyl wrapping pad. It's got some uh, hippie boogie girls going down with it. But uh, so I take the knock out simply because when this goes forward to remove that vinyl, you don't want to start putting nicks into your arrow knock as you go through. You don't want to start hitting nicks there because all that stuff can either one cause it to prematurely break or it can cause real crappy arrow flight or it can cut your finger so stuff like that more or less what I do is I'll take the three veins off first and then from there I'll just kind of run this down and kind of just take it off like string cheese really just one at a time and more or less we do that until that arrow is fully clean but you guys can see how easy that is doesn't take but a little bit then it would be nice uh, you can take Comet works really well um, we'll go back full screen but Comet works really well for actually prepping the arrow shaft after you've cleaned off old vinyl like that take a little Comet and put it on the back the rougher side of a scotch uh, dish sponge and just get a little bit of water on there and just really kind of work off any residue that you have and it also really preps that shaft. If you ever fletch directly onto carbon or directly onto aluminum, 
that comet works really well for totally cleaning that. That was actually, that tip came to me years ago from Dave Stepp. And I have no idea what comment is. Comet, it's, I think you clean your toilets with it. Okay, got it. <laughs> yep, somewhat cometed powder cleaner. Yep, that's exactly. the one. Exactly. Yep, that's it. If anyone, if any of you watching has some comment in your cupboard, go ahead and post a picture in the feed and we'll go from there. So the next thing is, we're just going to take a shaft here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this ready. Well, literally ready to roll. I'm going to take off one little piece of the vinyl, put it upside down. Um, Torsten's like you guys, he doesn't have any knock on wraps yet. So then what you want to do is you just really want to line up this arrow shaft so that the back of that shaft is even with the back edge of that vinyl. Okay, we've got a lot of vinyl in here. So I slide the arrow until I feel that it contacts both sides. You can see it's already contacted it. From there you're going to push and you're going to roll. Okay, and that's on. It's good. Again, clean hands is important. Um, otherwise having a fresh towel to where you can actually go ahead and apply pressure and kind of mash that down get full adhesion onto the shaft so you can see that there's no gap at all it's dead even with the back of the shaft and also the vinyl is pretty much a perfect size there's no overlap so okay we've got an arrow done Let's go ahead and fletch one quick. So, yeah, and if you've put on so much glue that it's running down into the barrel of your bits and burger, you're going to have way bigger problems. <laughs> like when this doesn't turn, then you're really screwed because we're not going to sell those. So, all right. So now let's talk about, um, I actually don't have, uh, come up a little higher again, T. I've got a few more things I want to cover first so I've got three veins that I'm gonna clean but the other thing is get in the habit of always taking that wipe that I talked about and cleaning off your clamps as soon as you're done with them or if you haven't done that then when you start up for the first time um, well let's see if you've got a I don't know if you get yeah, here we go so I like to take a knife and make sure that the base of this Bitsenberger is always clean. If you clean it properly, you don't have to worry about that, um, but also the inside. Because if you don't do that, what happens is where your vein stops, your glue will start to make a little ball down there. And when you load your vein in your jig, then it'll make the fronts and the backs kind of bump out and that'll that'll create the arrow to adhere here but not so much in the middle there the other thing that's um, good as you can see here that um, Torsten actually marked where his vein should start and stop that's a really good tip super important you want to make sure it's in the exact same spot every time so what I would do is I actually load two in a clamp like this just for speeding up the cleaning process just going to make sure that's coming out with the pen super easy more or less cleaning that off just like that and i'm going to set it on something that's clean that one already has glue on it so we're oh gonna, no yeah you, that's how much you use. So luckily we've got exactly three green veins right now. So I'm going to clean this off. Now, if you don't have the wipes and you have the pen, you can actually, if you're wanting to prep the vinyl just to make sure there's no oily residue on there, um, with a clean cloth you can't always dab that in the center. Get just a little bit on there and clean that vein that off. You can see it it was slippery at first and then it started to to get a little bit stiffer. So 
that did have some type of a film on this wrap, so that's important that we did that. So Bri now, Brian wants to know whether we're putting offset on it or though we're using a right helical clamp. So this is a right helical clamp. So the way, I actually haven't even paid attention to where your jig's set up. Let me just take a quick look. I'm gonna take a quick look at this. Good question, Ryan. Appreciate that. Okay, this is actually really sound. Glad I got something right. Yep. Yeah, you did. And it's it's a pretty it's a pretty good helical. This arrow will be spinning really fast. Um, but I'm gonna show you something based on this. Um, can I take that phone from you for a second? Okay. Hey everybody. So here, something I want you guys to look at. Um, so when this goes down, based on how he set this up, because you can see this has a pretty pretty solid angle, right? So based on that angle, when it has a very serious wrap or helical to it, then um, what you'll notice is a lot of times the vein will attach good here and it'll attach really good here, but it'll slowly start to lift here. So what I'll do is I'm going to show you what I do to help if you ever see a little bit of a lift in the center I'm going to show you exactly what I do there and it's going to help you. But another thing that I want to talk about is when it comes to the Bits and Burgers they do make a aftermarket barrel that goes in here that really helps your tolerance and really the tolerance variance is how the knock fits down in the end of that. So what I want to talk about is when you turn this and okay when you turn this like this and it snaps there's a small little difference in when you fletch this do you have a little marker anywhere black marker maybe I don't know if you do but anyway if you guys can pay attention if you guys can look at that line right there see the let's let's use the vinyl line as a reference see that line so even though we've clipped this into its place the tolerance of the arrow itself you can still turn this you can see how this still has a little bit of play left and right this one isn't that bad because it's an H knock but some knocks have a little bit more play than others so what you want to make sure you do is whenever you start your veins or make your click to a new location, I always just grab the tip of this and just make sure that I rotate it to where it's all the way laying the same, if that makes sense. Because what will happen is, if you don't do that, then one vein could be here and then when you turn it to the next one it could be one millimeter off and then the next one could be one millimeter maybe the other way and then what will happen is when you grab your arrows I'm not sure if that's the case with these but when you grab your arrows you'll see that I don't know about those mom jeans in the scene <laughs> but what you'll see is that the gapping between this and that and that one of them might be narrower than the other two and that can cause a difference in how that arrow performs and how that arrow flies so you want to make sure that you always do that and check that will be important so we've got this clean we just cleaned the three of these are pretty much ready to go um, and I've made sure this fit works so I'm gonna give the phone back and I'm gonna cap his cleaning pen so that that doesn't well if you don't want to cap your cleaning pen that's fine because we sell them every day but if you don't want to order every day then okay so actually this is this is kind of doing I'm gonna take it back one more time so I hope you guys can see yeah you can see it so do you see on the vein here that even though we have good contact and the vein is actually fully contacting the shaft here. Do you see? It, it, hey, 
I know you guys are asking about the aftermarket receiver. I forgot the name, so if anyone in the feed can give that name or make a link to the Lancaster site to where it is, that would be good. But can you guys see that right there? That, if you put heavy helical on an arrow, this lift right in here will start to give you a problem. So I'm going to show you um, how far should he fletch from the... I personally prefer from the throat of my knock to the start of this, Daniel. I want it to be about an inch and a quarter is where I like it to be. This one is really good. On this Bitsenberger jig, he just has a new one. It's actually right on the third tick. Third tick, maybe the fourth. So, yeah, the front is... It's actually... Um, Lance, you can see that the front's lifted a little bit, and even when I really push down hard, you can still see that this starts to happen, and that's because that shoe of that vein is is coming around like this, and so that does start to happen. Okay, yeah, Brian just said Zenith makes them. So, T, can you come behind me here and maybe come around this way, and I'm going to fletch this, and I'll let you be from maybe right over the shoulder here so I'm gonna take this can you get in here close enough to everybody yeah. see pretty good go ahead and grab focus on that I'm gonna let me clean this you got a crusty tip <laughs> which isn't good by the way so I've cleaned that I'm gonna go ahead and apply this glue down this and you can see slow and steady even and then I'll actually I'm not squeezing at this point all I'm doing is moving this to where it's all the way across the shoe of the vein and if you guys can see maybe back up a little bit focus there we go you guys can see it's all the way down it's not gooping so when you look down at like this there's not goop hanging out that's critical so then what we're gonna do so we're gonna apply this on here come on this side it's gonna be better right over my shoulder and we're there we go we're gonna slide this down and press and we've got good adhesion there's good adhesion here um, can see there's right here there's just a little sign that the glue is there and all the way down here this is very minimal but see that lift super common so what I do here I'm gonna hold grab that phone just hold it right there so then what I do is as soon as I've pressed and held that for a second I'll take this off I close the clamp and I slide the clamp back down so that it pushes on the left on the right side of the arrow shaft and it actually leans the arrow over and you can see that it actually presses that glue evenly right there and it's pretty much done. So that right there is how you do a vein. I'm gonna take this towel, wipe that down and you can see we've got a perfect vein applied with um, no gooping or excess anywhere. And that is what you want. You have a little a sign that the that there's some coming off the tip there. Normally, if you have just a little bit out the back, that's great. But if you shoot a super strong helical, that's what you do. Remove the clamp, slide it back down just far enough on the vein to where it causes the vein to lean over, and it'll actually press that. Let it sit for just a few minutes or a minute, and then we're ready to rock to the next spot like all my rock and roll references T yeah, it's, it's totally happening someone was asking whether we'd be um, whether we had some Metallica and some Slayer but uh, yes you want to talk about Metallica but why I want to talk about Metallica Metallica is awesome just listen to it all night <laughs> yeah well yeah he's got so many things here but he has some Metallica box sets that I didn't even know existed so we did jam to Metallica. I actually jammed to some Beastie Boys too, which was pretty dynamite. So, just because of the natural curve of this particular vein, we actually see that we've got 
a better adhesion all the way down. It's not near as, um, there wasn't a big lift there. And that just happens from different veins. Um, but I'm still gonna remove it and I'm gonna slide this down because this is a strong helical and you can see that because I did that, you can see an even sign of the glue all the way down. And with that, with that um, clamp still on that side because there's some excess, I'm actually gonna just take my thumb and wipe that excess up, not down, so it doesn't glue my knock on. <laughs> my knock on, geez, so many good references. Yeah, no, it's, it's super eloquent. It is. All right, so gonna load up another one, last one. This is about the speed of what it would take to fletch an arrow for everybody watching. Um, and again, for those of you coming in late, I'm gonna be doing some coaching with T and outside as soon as it warms up but the wind lays down a little bit and we're gonna talk silverback stuff. It's just the two of us so it's gonna be a little bit hard for me to multitask to coach hold the camera and show you but I'll do my best so put it in there my veins within my marks I set the base the bottom of the jig down and then I press in now this one you can see same thing for this particular one we've got a little bit of a void there so I'm gonna hold it just long enough to let there be contact and glue here I'll let off the clamp slide the clamp to the other side and then bam you can see it came out all the way across that's helping create a good seal there um, a q-tip works really good for this otherwise just you know one layer of the one layer of paper paper towel behind your thumb and I always go like this and there we go hold that See, no mess, no fuss. Beautiful. Beautiful. So now the last thing that we'll do, um, normally I like to have fletch tight platinum. I don't know if you have that. No. But I do what's called tipping and tailing, and I'll tail the, take the fletch tight platinum, and I'll make a dab there, a dab there, a dab there, a dab there, there, and there. Maybe hold, I'm going to come right back. One second. I'm going to my arrows. Right. And here we go. So this is these are my arrows. Let's go ahead and touch that just so it focuses. You might have to back up a little bit. There. So you can see where I've tipped and t see where I've tailed. This is fletch tight platinum that I've just dropped on all these spots. This is my indoor arrow, and I've also dropped it on the fronts. So if you're shooting a blade. This is really important, and get freaky, people. Yeah, it's it's psychedelic. So that's it. We got uh, we got some arrows built. We learned how to not glue our tips on, and we've got perfectly built arrows now. You learn how to make them stick, stick the right way. You learn how to be able to shoot. You can see this has quite a bit more helical than what mine would. If you can look down that, can they see down that? Yeah. Perfect. So you can see there's a pretty good wrap on that. And we have, even with the solid wrap, we've got perfect adhesion all the way down with no voids in the center. So, hey, thanks everybody. Make sure you hang around. We're gonna keep doing archery stuff, like I said. The bow's built, the bow's all done. It's shooting bullet holes. We're gonna make a few adjustments to T's um, form and all that good stuff. And then we're gonna go from there. So, see ya. Finished.